Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlock. And I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And today, guys, we love Chris Bryant, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but we're mm-hmm. about to give you three reasons why the Blue Jays should not mm-hmm, go for Chris mm-hmm, Bryant. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we get into those guys, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that post notification bell button. And as well, this video is brought to you by Monkey Knife Fight. Use the code today, Jays, to get discounts and deals that you see throughout the video. Yeah, man. All right, so reason number one, Nick. Mm-hmm. Why should we not go get Chris Bryant? Um, he's elite. Dude, Fernando he's elite. Tatis Jr. Wander Franco. Juan Soto. Okay, well, Juan Soto's actually not signed yet, but $333 million for freaking uh, Tatis Jr. Yeah, 228 mil for Wander Franco. That's this guy's barely played any MLB games, goddammit. That's a lot of money. If we want to get back Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette, which is already, without even Chris Bryant on the books, asking for something, because the more that I think about it, the more that I'm like, maybe Bo Bichette actually deserves $300 million. Dude, he's close. He's very it's close. It's getting very close. You know, it's like, the more he <laughs> yeah. does, the more I'm like, Jesus Christ, this guy could be the next Lindor. Like, he's yep. going to get a contract yep. like that. He could Vladimir be the next Guerrero Jr. Jr. Definitely going to get a contract like yep. that. Like, these guys are going to get $300 million plus if they continue on the trajectory that they're doing. If we want to get both of them back, or maybe even just one of them, signing Chris Bryant to a massive deal, which would be assumed, yeah. you know, at least $150, $160 million yeah. for several years, that is going to make it kind of difficult to do such a thing. It is. It is. Guys, in 2022, we have a, a current payroll of $160 million right now. Currently. Mm. This, is with, with, this is with Gosman. This is mm-hmm. with all the signings that we've done, extensions we've done. If you think about Bo and Vlad... Easily somewhere between twenty five and thirty five million dollars average annual value for Guaranteed. both of them. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So let's say they get a combined sixty million dollars total for both of them okay. year after year. That's a lot of money. After Ryu and after Grichik leave, that's about hundred and ninety million dollars that you have. But with Bryant, if you sign Bryant, that's about two hundred and fifteen mm. million. Now you're capped out. At least right now that we know yeah, with the current yeah. CBA. Now you're capped out. You really have no more wiggle room. So adding someone like Chris Bryant really handcuffs you with one of those extensions. Yeah, and that also, you're not even factoring into the fact that it's like, just to just to make that happen, it's like, Tio's not getting an extension. Tio's not getting an extension. Lord is not Lord's getting an extension. It's like, yep. we also have all of these like young pitchers who eventually are going to need to get paid. Extension. It's like, people are going to want to get paid. Like, yep. that's not even factoring in any of that. And, you know, wiggle room to get other dudes. Like, yep. uh-oh, buddy goes down with an injury. Like, we need to make a trade. Yep. Oh, shit, we can't because we can't take on that guy's contract. It's like, there are these things to think about. And and yes, Chris Bryant is 1,000% worth the money, but it does kind of limit you as to what you can do, especially with the young boys. So that is number one reason, definitely right there. Something to think about. Number two reason, Jordan Groshans or Elvis Martinez our number two, our number three prospect, yeah. not in that order. Actually, the other way around mm-hmm. is number two, Jordan. Mm-hmm. Do you understand yeah. the freaking The prospects. They're prospects, the prospects. And they play that position. Yes, they do. They yes, they do. Position. Yeah, they're both young guys. And he's, speaking of Jordan Groshans, he's a first rounder. So mm-hmm. we spent the first round to get this guy, and he's expected to play in 2022. Yeah. He's expected to make his debut. And if there's Chris Bryant there, there's an obvious log jam, yes. and you can't get in the infield because you still got you still got a, a Biggio, you mm-hmm. still got Espinal that mm-hmm. would probably go play second base. Mm-hmm. And now it's a log jam. Now what do you do with what do you do with Jordan Groshans? So you trade him? It you gotta feels, have to. Well, it feels right? like you kind of have to. And then you start asking yourself, well, if if you know acquiring Chris Bryant is gonna force me to trade Jordan Groshans anyways, well, why don't I just trade Jordan Groshans for a third baseman? Who's not going to cost as much money? That's true. You know what I mean? It's that's like true. why would why would I that's do a, that? That's a you method. Know? Yeah. It, you know, if if literally acquiring this guy, going to pay him so much money, is going to you know force me to probably get rid of this dude. Maybe I should just trade him to begin with, if that's what the management is thinking. So, I don't know. That is definitely a reason. You know, it's like right. these guys need to play baseball, and they're not going to get an opportunity. And we haven't there. we haven't even seen Jordan Groshans at the major league level yet. No. Like last year in Double A, he hit it, he hit uh, eight seventeen OPS. That's pretty which damn is good. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. He might go see the major leagues this. Uh, this yeah. upcoming year, but or, we don't. You know, is he going to hit eight seventeen? Probably not. Chris Bryant will probably hit better than Jordan yeah, Groshans. Yeah, sure, for sure. But again, we're just talking about contracts. He will be a lot cheaper, maybe in the future. He mm-hmm. becomes Chris Bryant and level. You never know. And that is another thing too, right? If Aurelvis Martinez, like Jordan Groshans, yeah. are dudes, yeah. then I want them to be dudes on cheap contracts. Yeah. You look what the Houston Astros are doing right now. Um, oh my gosh, what is it? Alvarez. Alvarez. Yes. Freaking, and and uh, Tucker, right? Tucker. It's like, these are dudes. Dudes 
who got the opportunity to play now yeah. and are showing up and it's making it so that their first wave of like like we're elite isn't done yet they're on their second wave you know it's yes, like yes. They, they lost freaking um Correa, Correa they lost Springer, Springer but yeah. it's fine because you get all these young dudes who are like really yeah. cheap money and still putting up so it's yeah. like we want this this whole window to stay open for like a decade you got to keep the window open you got to keep, you keep the window open and let the prospects with, come with young in dudes like this you don't want to bring in more people into the party and, and push them out yeah because then they're gonna leave yeah they're gonna go somewhere else and be elite on other teams agreed exactly. yeah agreed man reason number three why maybe getting chris bryan is not the best idea ever we should not do it is Santiago Espinal and Kevin Biggio, two guys that are already on the roster in kind of a similar situation to Elvis Martinez and to Jordan Groshans. If you go out, you get Chris Bryant, or any one of the big free agents, actually, but if you go get Chris Bryant, one of them is assuredly now out of a job. Yeah, that's right. And, like, obviously, uh, looking at last year, you look at the two guys, Biggio, and you look at Espinal. Mm. When you look at Espinal... I prefer Espinal over Bejo, but Bejo totally. still has a chance to improve. But we were looking at an article, and the article had some really good points yeah. on why Espinal should stay at third base and play third base. Yeah, man. Okay, first of all, he had 311. We which all is know incredible. that, which is great. It doesn't get talked about it enough. It doesn't actually. get talked about yeah. enough. But he had an offensive war of 2.2. Now, it mm -hmm. doesn't sound like a lot, but that's better than Bregman. That's better than Kyle Seeger. That's mm -hmm. better than Josh Donaldson, who yeah. a lot of people have been saying that they want to trade for. Yes. And, and here's a comparison. A guy with more plate appearances, George Springer, about 100 more to be mm -hmm. exact, he had a 2.4 war. Yeah. So San Diego Aspinal is actually putting up. And how elite was George Springer in those 350? He's like pretty damn pretty good. Elite. You know, like he was very good, right? So San Diego Espinal is not squandering his opportunities when he gets to the plate. And you want to talk about straight up freaking defense. A problem that we had at the beginning of last year started to mend a little bit. Something that I want us to continue to focus on going into this season. Mm -hmm. Espinal is, he could be, you know, a, a next like gold glove for sure. Second in fielding in the AL, only behind Gold Glove winner Matt Chapman. Mm, fourth one third of, base. Fourth, fourth third, third base. base. One of literally the best like yeah. defensive third baseman yeah. in you know of our generation right now. Nine eighty fielding percentage, and then you go and you look at the defensive runs above average. Oh yeah, this Espin is a big one. This is a, this is a big this one. This is a massive one. Espinal had a plus seven point three defensive runs above average, so he's saving seven point three runs. Whereas That's Chris Bryant, the guy that we're gonna go out. Is giving up six point three. Yeah, that is almost that yeah. is literally like fourteen run swing right there yeah. that you're getting. Yeah. yeah, that that's like two, three, maybe four wins on the yeah. season yeah. potentially. Like yeah. I don't know, man, but like there's some defensively. To be said for that. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I hear you. And like you know, you always think about Chris Bryant. Well, he's got the bat. Well, you know, he can play outfield. Well, mm -hmm. you know, well, Espinal's bat is uh, is doing good enough. It's yeah, doing good. doesn't have power, mm -hmm. but. That's okay. We that's why we have Josh Hernandez. That's why we have George Springer. That's why yes. we have Boba Shett and Vladdy and guys who can hit for raw power. Like you don't need everyone to hit for power. It's no. fun. It's exciting. But this guy gets a job done with a three eleven batting average. Yeah, at the end of the day, he gets what, it done. what you really need is for people to get on base. Yeah. And Espinal yeah. definitely does that. So guys, those are our three reasons why not to go out and get Chris Bryant. Now I do want to just finish this off by saying we do really like Chris. We Bryan, do like right? Chris. We do Bryan. really like Chris. Bryan. But these are good. These are good points to think about because you do got to think about at this point in your franchise, mm -hmm. money. Yes. You're in, yes. Rogers is rich. We saw an article. They yeah. have the second most highest like income for like a company owning a baseball team. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. But there's a salary uh, like uh, there's a salary tax. Yes. You know what I mean? Like we there's a ta luxury tax. So we got to like consider that, guys. We got to consider that. So. This is one way to save a bit of money if we don't yeah. get Chris Bryant and still be okay. And still not be team. upset that we didn't yeah. go out and get it. You know, it's like just imagine, just see the potential right now. Espinal comes out, maybe he hits five more home runs this year, yeah. continues oh, with yeah. what he's doing, right? Now you're looking at a guy with like an 840 OPS being elite defensively, going to be up yeah. for a gold glove potentially, and he's going to get paid like dirt change yeah look cheap like dirt Super change cheap. right it's like this is the type of dude that we need to come up we need to win baseball games with but guys let us know in the comments down below what you think about this are these reasons enough to make you not want to go and get, get chris bryan or trevor story or carlos gray or whoever it's going to be to fill that spot or do you still think the team needs to go out get that all-star get that hard-hitting third baseman comment down below guys you can also check us out on spotify google podcast anchor radio public and breaker also please make sure to like comment subscribe and this video is brought to you by monkey knife 
fight. Use the code today, Jays. It really helps out the channel, and you can get some sweet deals, get some discounts that you saw throughout the video. And as well, guys, uh, become a Patreon. It's $3 a month, and you can come join the Wine on Wine call in while we're drinking. It's lots of fun. And shout out, thank you to all of our current Patreons. You guys are supporting us, and we really, really appreciate it. And uh, come on the show anytime. Just message us. We have an opening. Hit us up. Thank you so much for watching. And go, go Jays, go! go.